pitched you all an issue that we're very passionate about in one word. Well, we couldn't find an existing word to pinpoint what we were trying to convey. So we created the word stamina. <laughs> it's a combination of stem and stamina. It is defined as the stamina required for a woman to progress in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. The fact that women need stamina today is partially the reason why the gender gap in STEM is so evident. In the U.S., less than 25% of STEM workers are female. With this issue, there have been many initiatives trying to approach this recognized problem. Girls Who Code, Society of Women Engineers, um, the Association for Women in Science, and the Girls Collaborative Project all involving women in STEM and intriguing them, offering, high, offering elementary girls the STEM projects, middle school girls, online courses, um, college level girls, motivation, and female workers in STEM right now, support groups. So with all of that, 74% of high school students, high school girls are interested in STEM. But with that in mind, why is there still an obvious deviation? Simone and I are here today to identify a source contributing to this gap. It's the high school environment. To illustrate our point, we decided to provide you with a scenario. This is Sally. Sally is a high school freshman. A time when, well, she's a little bit vulnerable. She doesn't know who to walk with during class, who to sit with at lunch, or who to partner up with in class. So Sally prioritizes need to be accepted by others, and their finding is both academically and emotionally beneficial. So Sally searches for a group of girls who share her predominant interests. Let's say that Sally joins cheer, and she becomes very close to their teammates. Sally has found her high school clique. This is great, right? Over time, Sally feels confined to be interested in what her friends are drawn towards. Essentially, she's afraid of expressing an interest in something she shouldn't like. <laughs> In high school, prime atypical subjects, otherwise known as subjects Sally shouldn't like or shouldn't be interested in, are STEM subjects. Not only is the gender different, not only do males dominate these subjects, but Sally doesn't really have any friends in her clique to get together with in these classes. Um, and that's how it kind of has to be right now. We found a recent article from the Frontiers in Psychology saying that student stereotypes of the STEM culture, including the people that are in it, steers girls away from choosing to be in these classes. Let's say that Sally does choose to pursue her STEM interests. Well, she will feel not as accepted as the other students in her class and will have to work for this respect. Also, she will lack the support of her friends, and she may even start doubting herself. A recent study from Columbia showed that when women were told that they usually don't perform as well as men on a test, and then they took the test, they didn't perform as well as the group that were told before taking the test that both genders usually perform equally. This goes to show that there is girls like Sally who have the way that they view themselves affect their academic performance. And the way that they view themselves is completely based off of how others view them. How do we know this? Well, Paul and I are high school students doing STEM when I was going into high school, I was so into fashion. Um, I created an anonymous Twitter account where I posted pictures of stylish items I liked. And uh, I landed an internship with a high-end jewelry company, Melvin Jewelry, and uh, fell in love with it and still intern with them now. But I developed this interest in engineering to the point where when people asked me what I wanted to do as a career, I said, something to do with fashion and engineering. And they looked at me oddly and they said, don't you mean fashion or engineering? Um, but what they didn't realize is that both subjects provide me the opportunity to express my creativity um, by building things, whether it's a robot or a necklace. When I was going into high school, I was more towards athletics. I knew I wanted to do track and swim, and so I joined them and continued to do them throughout high school. Yet, I also started to develop an interest in computer science and biology. Yet, out of the 32 kids in my computer programming class, I was the only girl. I kept noticing a pattern with this where I felt like I didn't fit in in any of my classes. This is one reason why Holland and I feel we need to create this platform. 
is to make sure that these girls do feel like they can fit in. When we met each other at MIT launch this past summer, it dawned on us that we weren't the only girls that felt like imposters in our STEM classes. Although we might have felt like outliers in our high school for having a STEM entry coupled with an atypical interest such as fashion or athletics, we weren't alone. And we were both elated to finally have fit in with another high school student and to have support from them. Um, with this confidence boost, we not only realized that we belong in these classes, but we can bring our atypical interests and offer a new perspective. Using our newly found entrepreneurial skill set, we identified a problem that we knew we needed to find a solution for. So we brainstormed on how to get these girls who felt like outliers in their class to ignore the uninviting looks and pursue STEM anyway. And reflecting back on how we overcame the issue, we realized that once we knew that there was other girls going through the same issues and we weren't the only ones, that we felt a lot better and more confident with what we were doing. Therefore, we created the platform Girls of Tomorrow, which allows high school students to connect with other high school students across the country or even a different country. Therefore, this, therefore, this provides emotional support and they can work with each other on projects or with STEM learning. So why can't girls like Simone and I or Sally suppress their interest until college and continue to fit in in high school? Is high school really that important in determining one's career? Um, the study that Simone mentioned earlier from Columbia actually proved that high school years are more important than college years in determining the gender gap in STEM careers. And also, with all these AP courses offered in high school right now, uh, now it's uh, a springboard for STEM select uh, for career selection. However, there is still this social forces that are kind of uh, steering people away from choosing to enter STEM. In modern day high school, there's this challenge to balance the societal forces along with your career selection. If there was a girl like Simone or I or Sally in every U.S. public high school, that's 21,000 girls that could be bringing their, their interest into the STEM fields. STEM education for women is not only beneficial economically. By filling up these STEM jobs that are very high quality and provide a more diverse workforce, but they also have the ability to empower women. The power to bring your interests to the table and discover your brilliance and take this brilliance and change the world with it, well, that's why Holland and I are passionate about this issue, and that's why we need to change this starkingly low number of women in STEM as of now. We want to give the girls the tools and the confidence to pursue their STEM interests and succeed with that, so the girl of tomorrow does not have to grow against the social boundaries of today.